warm welcome to round four of the NGK F1 Powerboat Championship, which this week takes place in Springfield, Ohio. Now, Springfield saw multiple different heat winners last year, so we're looking for more of the same at this year's event. And they fire. What a great jump there by the two of Hawkins, as well as the 94 of Wyatt. 15 of Tim Kraft, front of Andros College, gonna get mixed up in the wash there. He's gonna have to knife his way between a bunch of boats as they all go flying down the far end of the course. Look at that drone shot. We've got all 12 boats here in this Group B qualifying heat number three, and it's the 94 of Wyatt. Oh, look how Tracy Hawkins goes through the wash. The 94 of Wyatt just shut the door on the two of Hawkins. As he knows, after picking up a penalty in qualifying yesterday for hitting a buoy, he is having to push tremendously hard here on Sunday to try to capture as high of a starting position as he can because he knows he's got to get the likes of Rinker and Foster. He's got to get jump on those guys early in the final. And to do that, he's going to have to get a great qualifying run here in Heat 3. Look at that crystal clear heated wiper blades on the side. Moore all composite design hall. That boat built in France, purchased by uh, team manager a couple of years back and now run by the 94 at Wyatt as he can, opens up a big lead, just like the 52 of Chris Rinker. It seems that, that getting that whole shot off the start pontoon is going to be absolutely imperative for a successful run here at round four of the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships. There's the number 40 of Austin Cheatham as he goes side by side with a deck to deck with the two of Tracy Hawkins and then come flying out of the back uh, of the shot there and second or excuse me last off the dock the 93 of RJ West running for Chuck Skelton racing and composite craft boats uh, is continuing to push hard he's already up into third will he get the pole away from Rinker remember Ashton got third excuse me he got second no third in group A's final qualifying heat I think if the 93 of RJ West can get his way up into second position here in group B he might end up snatching away that pole, and that could be huge. Remember, in Group 8 qualifying heat number three, huge lead for Chris Rinker. He ran it all the way wire to wire. And now here comes West. We got Tunnel of Enterprises of Tracy Hawkins on the inside. The 93 of RJ West wide to the outside. There's the 24 of Spencer Love, Clover Construction. The 34 of Jeff Reno, the Okeechobee Florida native, pushing hard for fourth, fifth, and sixth. But look at the two of Race and Tracy Hawkins trying to push hard, but it wasn't enough. The 93 of RJ West coming last off the dock is already rocking it itself into second position and now the crew chief and radio man for the 94 of Rusty Wyatt saying hey RJ's already up in a second you got to keep pushing keep pushing keep that pedal down and keep driving that thing like you stole it as he goes down the front straightaway down into turn number one as you look how big that lead is the 93 of RJ West nowhere to be seen in that overhead shot as we saw our leader there he comes now so two turns behind almost 15 second lead for the 94 of RJ excuse me the 94 of Rusty Wyatt over the 93 of RJ West it's tough, all those 90s numbers, all those R names, they get a little blended together. Uh, but the 93 of West is not going to let the 94 of Wyatt mistake anything, not make one mistake out there. If he does, he's gonna pounce all over the crystal clear wiper blade sponsor number 94. But he's out in front trying to do exactly what Chris Rinker did in qualifying group A heat three, which is to come off the dock like a rocket, kick it high fly, fly it high wide and dancing for almost 15 laps here on the shores of Champions Park Lake on this five pin one mile course and try to walk it all the way to the checkered flag. There's the 24 Love sitting in fifth position, fighting hard with the 38, the Woodlawn, Tennessee of Jeff Shepard. There's the 40 of Cheatham sitting in third. And then look at fourth and fifth. Boom, boom. There's Shepard in love. In sixth is the 77 of Quindazzi. From second to sixth, we've got about three and a half, four seconds. And look at the 38 of Shepard. He shuts the door on Love. Love's got to cross through the wake. Now they go through the right hander. He's got to cross through the wake again. That is not good for the number 24 of Spencer Love running for Clover Construction. Uh, they got to push hard. They go side by side. Did I see the number two of Tracy Hawkins off the race course? Did it? Do we have disaster again for the man out of Willis, Texas? It has been a year of trials and tribulations for Tracy Hawkins, and he just can't seem to buy a finish, let alone a podium, as the Tuttle Enterprises sponsored entry is now a spectator here in Group B qualifying Heat 3. And almost everybody is a spectator to the number 94 of Rusty Wyatt as he's got a huge lead over the rest of the field, coming down into turn one. 
puts it on its tail out of turn one and pushes it down to the far north end of the course. But a great battle for fourth and fifth as the 24 Love was able to get by him. Down there on the north end of the course, looked like the 24 Love just made a great move. But notice that those drivers are sitting in fourth and fifth position. And the 94 of Wyatt is starting to close in on some of them. Back markers are a part of boat racing and something that the 94 of Wyatt better get used to because if he's going to have a whole shot like he did here, he might find himself out in front of the final. But there in fifth is the 38 of Shepard. Then it's the sixth is the 77 of Quindazzi, followed by the PPG Paints number 69 of Jimmy Merlou sitting in seventh. We've got about three seconds. Whoa, look at Merlou go wide to the outside. Where did he come from? Like a rocket on the far outside lane, lane number five there, pushing it hard. And now the 94 Wyatt pushing hard for Speedmaster Marine and Crystal Clear Wiper Blades to try to get some back markers between himself and the second place vote, the number 93 of RJ West. There's the there's 94 now. He's gotten by the 15 Honduras College of Tim Kraft. Now looking to eye up Another one of our drivers here, I believe that was the, was that not the 77 of Quindazzi? You might see him as he go down to the north end of the course there. That's how far our leader, our top two boats are. They don't, the third place boat is nowhere near the 94 of Wyatt and the 93 of West. These Formula One tunnel hulls, speeds of zero, at upwards of zero to 120 miles an hour in almost five seconds, 6G. 90 degree left hand turns and they'll even turn right here on the shores of champions park lake we're here in springfield ohio on the clark county fairgrounds for wake lake three and yes i do, can confirm the two of tracy hawkins another motor history motor issue mark that as the third out of four races where the number two of hawkins has not been able to complete all the qualifying heats here in 2019 that has got to be very frustrating for the willis texas native Who's not frustrated right now is our leader, the 94 of Wyatt. He's got a huge lead over the 93 of RJ West. West starting to close the gap a little bit, but it seems like that whole shot is just what is needed here in Springfield for round four of the 2019 NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships. Oh, that is the 69 of Merlou now working up for fifth position. Pushing hard now, going side by side with a 38 Woodlawn, Tennessee native of Jeff Shepard. Running for Hampton Inn and Suites. The 38 is Shepard. First race with the NGK series here in 2019. Now our leader, the 94 of Wyatt, goes wide to the outside, trying to get by the number 70. Total Energy Services at Jude Gaspard. Easily gets by Jude uh, as the rookie is still continuing to learn quite a bit. We can see the 38 of Shepard and the 69 of Jimmy Merlou and that PPG Paints DAC machine pushing hard as they fight for fourth position. Nobody seems to have an answer for the 94 of Wyatt. It looks like Merlou got down to the inside. Did Merlou get him? Looks like Merlou got him down in turn number one. What a great run there for the Fentonville, Fentonville Michigan native 69 of Jimmy Merlou moving himself one further spot up. The order here in Group B's qualifying heat number three. There's the 34 Clockner medals of Jeff Reno, the gentleman hailing out of Okeechobee, Florida. You see that interesting design that was caused after Jeff was sucked up into a water spout, AKA a tornado over water, and in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and dropped on his head. He was, suffered some neck damage, so what he did as, as a gentleman who's quite tall in stature, he added an additional handful of inches to that capsule to give himself a little bit more headroom. But look at that deck-to-deck -deck battle we've coming down from the north end of the course. Looks like that's the 24 of Spencer Love and the 40 of Austin Cheatham. Cheatham now relinquishing the third spot on the podium. Frustrating for the Nashville Marine sponsored young man out of Texas in that 40, number 40 Grand Prix Hall. But the 24 of Spencer Love after winning qualifying heat in two in Group B gets himself back up onto the podium as he's hanging on to third position, but not by much as the 93 of West has really closed the gap. The 93 of West is just a couple of seconds behind the leader of Wyatt as he slides it wide out of turn number five across the start finish line. And that's the checkered flag taken. The checkered flag here in Group B qualifying heat number three out of Innisville, Ontario, Canada, the number 94 of Rusty Wyatt.
Here we go. We are under, just about to get underway. They drop the flag. Great jump there by the 24 of Love as well as the 94 of West. But no surprise, a real great move by the number 20 of Ashton Rinker. Who's going to make it to that first pin? It looks like the 93 of RJ West did not get the greatest of starts off the start pontoon, and that could make it very difficult for him here this afternoon as our group of leaders goes down into turn number one. They make it through one and then turn two. Oh, look out, taking out a buoy there. Uh, was one of the boats back in seventh or eighth position, but he started on the pole, and he's got that clean water, and he's got it flying high and dancing, coming down into the through the right-hander down into turn number five. As he comes across the start finish line, it's go, fa it's go fast, turn left and right here as he's going to start lap one. Look at the 62 of Fairchild. He started eighth off the start pontoon. He's into third. Rusty Wyatt started third. He's moved up to, sec uh, up to second. What happened to Spencer Love? He's been shuffled down to fourth. Then it's the 93 of West. And that inexperience on the 52 of Chris Rinker just had him backing off a little bit when they went into that first turn. And that's got him shuffled all the way back to sixth position. The 20 of Rinker, a solid lead right now, but as this water starts to churn up, as they start to get into those back markers, it's gonna be very interesting to see what the number 20 of Ashton Rinker is gonna have, how he's gonna be able to navigate that as he's gonna have the likes of 94 of Rusty Wyatt, who's in second, and the 93 of RJ West as well, or excuse me, the 62 of Chris Fairchild, who's in third, and the 24 of Spence Sullivan fourth. They are gonna come bearing down on him very, very quickly. As the 20 of Ashton Rinker looks to complete lap number one here as he goes down through turns one and two. The 62 of Fairchild, boy, looks like he might have saved it for the main event because he has got it dialed in, but we are missing some buoys down there at the far end of the course. Somebody's going to have to pay a fine and take a one-lap penalty. I just don't know who it was. There were so many darn boats in that corner. The 24 of Spencer Love sitting in fourth position, still holding off the 93 of RJ West, who did not come off the dock well at all. Uh, here in this 25 boat main event here for round four of the NGK Formula One Power Boat Championships here at Wake the Lake 3, the Clark County Fairgrounds, Springfield, Ohio. And it's just so hard to, when, when a driver has such a level, high level of comfort in the boat, it's so hard to, to really find those little tiny margins of error that he may leave out on the course. And you have to, you can't just get one big one to get up and catch him. You've got to string four or five or six little instances together uh, to hopefully close that gap. Boy, the 93 West, he knows he didn't get a good start. He is just driving the pants off that thing. He's got it flying way high, and he's pushing it real hard. Look at that, 25 Formula One boats on this one-mile, five-pin course here on the shores of Champions Park Lake. Already, the 20 of Rinker starting to get into some of those back markers. He already got by the two of Race and Tracy Hawkins, now getting by the 96 of Fred Durr. And we see there the 94 of West the and then 62 of Fairchild, about a 6-8 length boat lead, boat lead above the number 24 of Love and the 93 of West. And it looks like they're up into fifth position now, the 53 Foster, oh, and I just heard a red flare. Something's happened out on the course. I can't tell what it is, but it looks like we may have said either somebody go over or possibly just that buoy got so dislodged that uh, that we had to start the race over or we had to cause a red flag on the race course. We just waiting to see what happens. Oh no, looks like it's the 77 of Mike Quindazzi. Looks like he may have spun out or barrel rolled down there in turn number two on the far end of the race course. Here we go. We are under starter's orders just a few seconds away. They dropped the flag. Whoa, what happened to Rinker? What happened to Rinker? He didn't get that good of a jump. He's out there, but he's porpoising. That's not good. What's going to happen? He's got that inside line, but a great run there by the 62 of Fairchild. 94 of Rusty Wyatt started with a good run, but I don't know what happened to his top end. Man, Rinker did not come off the dock well, but you can get away with a little bit of that when you have pole position, which he did. 62 of Fairchild left the 94 of Rusty Wyatt in the dust. And he's all moved himself up into second position. Now on the 94 of Wyatt falling back to third. 
but they are neck and neck. Just a boat length separate. The 62 of Fairchild and the 94 crystal clear wiper blades of Wyatt. But again, just like he has done every race this year, he has not been able to get out in front and run an entire race clean. There has always been a restart. In Bay City, there was two of them. In Toledo, there was four of them. And he still came out victorious. So it looks like he's really leaning on that experience to get him back out in front, which he's been able to do. The 94 of Wyatt hanging down, moving down into third. The 24 of Spencer Love is now out in front uh, of the 53 of the 93 of West. And so he was able to get a really good jump. But what happened to the 53 of Foster? RJ was ahead. RJ West of the 93 Ch Chuck Skelton Racing Team machine was uh, definitely in front of the 53 of Foster, but he was ahead of the 24 of Love, and now you see the 24 of Clover Construction of Spencer Love sitting in that third position. Could the 24 get another podium? Boy, that would be a, an amazing turn of events for the young man out of Santa Rosa Valley, California. But we're all just hoping that somebody can knock off the 20 of Ashton Rinker from this pedestal that he has created here in 2019. Remember, in the history of Formula One racing in North America, no driver has ever won every single race except for Terry Rinker. He's the only one. I believe he did it in 2005, 2006, somewhere in there. But with a win here, he would be one step closer to being the second person, but yet still the only Rinker to win the in every race with an entire series. He's putting on a show for the folks here in Springfield, Ohio. That's for sure, as he's got it strolling down into, down the back straight away through turns one and two, and now he looks to try to navigate that right-hander. But here we've got that battle for third. That's the 24 of Love and the 93 of RJ West. Here's where it's gonna get real dicey for the 20 of Rinker because the man right behind him is somebody who is very comfortable, very familiar, and I believe quite thoroughly enjoys running through lap traffic. As you can see, the 191 of Jake Alkema, he's out there, he's collecting seat time. Obviously, when you rip off that much of your boat and your boat goes over and your motor gets wet and you've got to dry everything out, inevitably, you're going to find a gremlin or two. Uh, so, of course, that one not doing so well. Looks like we got a boat that pulled off there. That might be the 71 of Jim Kerr. He pulled to the inside of the track there, uh, coming out of the front, uh, down through the right-hander. There's the number two Tunnel Enterprises, the race in Tracy Hawkins. He's just trying to stay on the lead lap. I have never seen a driver have such a great year one year and have so many issues, so many problems pop up the following season to the point where he shuffled eight places lower than he finished in the season standings from last year. You'd expect him to competing for the championship again, and maybe he could have even won it, or at least that was his hope when he built that new Chaos Hall. But from boats coming apart to motors being damaged, it has been a very trying season for the number two of racing Tracy Hawkins. Our leader, the number 20 of Ashton Rinker. Pushing hard as he comes down out of the hairpin left-hand turn in turn number four. Getting by to the number 96 of Fred Durr. As the 20 of Rinker sweeps it down through five and across the start finish line, he is pushing it for everything it is worth. Trying to make sure he keeps the likes of Chris Fairchild, Rusty Wyatt, RJ West, and Greg Foster at bay. And there's the 03 of Dustin Terry. Clearly, uh, that Stillwater, Stillwell Spirits machine is not dialed in in any way very un, uh, unpredictable out there. So no surprise that the young driver from Thibodeau, Louisiana, taking a little easy in that backup boat so he can at least ensure that he finishes the race and is able to collect some valuable points. He's gonna need to try to shuffle himself up at least a couple of positions in the overall season standings. As the 20 of Rinker puts it on its rooster tail and comes dancing down the front straightaway, he's now eyeing up some of the boats that are in the low t low t to mid-teens here in this 25-boat main event. So it's going to be very interesting how far he's going to be able to work his way up the field. 
but not surprised is the fact that he's got it flying high, wide, and dancing. Man, he has got that at Rinker Boat World McLean Trailers machine absolutely moving here on the shores of Champions Park Lake. The 20 of Ashton Rinker continuing to push hard, knowing that he's got the 62 of Fairchild in his rearview mirror, and it does not take much but a split second incorrect decision, and the 62 of Fairchild will pounce all over. So the 20 of Ashton Rinker, while knowing he's out in front, he knows he has to run, run a flawless late race because the 62 of Fairchild is a surgeon on the water. But you can see now he's getting jammed up between all those back markers, and it's going to be real tough for him to get far enough through those back markers in a quick enough amount of time to be able to catch the rinker. He is so far out in front now because he was able to so well navigate the, the right-handers as well as all the back traffic. It's just, it's been a great year for the 20 of rinker. Uh, you know, he was excited to win last year, but he barely won. He won two races out of the six, uh, barely won the second one. And so with essentially two really, one really solid win, he was able to come home with the overall series championship because he was so consistent. Well, this year he stepped that game up. He's like, I don't want third. I don't want second. Can I just win them all? Is that possible? You know, and nobody told him no. The young man from Riverview, Florida was like, okay, nobody's telling me go. I'm gonna go ahead and try to do it. Well, he's been able to pull that trigger so far, earning all the top spots at every race across the series throughout all of 2019. And he could, but the difference is, is instead of resting back on his laurels and soaking up the sun of being a great racer. Oh, look how we had a blow over down to the far end of the course. And that is the number 93 of RJ West. Well, we say hashtag not a rookie, but it looks like a, one, a rookie move here for the young man out of Mantica, California. Looks like he slid it through the right-hander and got it up on its tail and it careened out of control. Well, Mr. Rinker, can you handle another restart? All right, some words from on-site announcer Jeff Doan and they are under starter's orders. He drops the flag and Foster doesn't fire again. What is going on with the 53 of Greg Foster? He cannot get the CB Technologies Hoffman Formula One off the beach to save his life here today. But we got him side by side. It looks like neither did Fairchild. Oh no, he fired. But here he goes, deck to deck with Wyatt on his inside hip. And on Wyatt's inside hip is the man who is looking to go for his fourth win in four tries here in 2019, trying to go wire to wire here in round four. He went wire to wire in round three. He went wire to wire in round two. And oh wait, did I mention? He went wire to wire in round one. He has led every single lap of the Formula NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships here in 2019 in the main events. And that is an extremely impressive feat. The 94 of Wyatt was able to hold the 62 of Fairchild at bay, and now Fairchild nipping at his heels is the 69 of Jimmy Marilou in the PPG paint-sponsored entry. But they don't have very many laps left to catch the man running for Rinker Boat World and McLean Trailers as he's continuing to push hard. Looks like the 77 of Mike Quindazzi moves himself back up a couple spots into 13th position. Oh, it looks like we had a boat go dead out in the water there at the far side of the course. Was that Mayor Lou or was that the 03 of Dustin Terry? We're going to have to wait and find out once our cameras get back around. But there goes the 94 of Wyatt through the right-hand chicane. Down into turn number five. This hard 120-degree hairpin turn out of turn five across the start-finish line. The 20 of Rinker has got a substantial lead. Can he continue to widen that? Or will getting in some of the back markers force his lead to shrink and force him to really have to slug it out with the likes of Wyatt? Fairchild and Merlou, is that's your top four right now here in round four of the NGK, Formula One, Powerboat Championships here at Wake the Lake Three on the shores of Champions Park Lake inside the Clark County Fairgrounds, Springfield, Ohio. And it looks like the 52 of Chris Rinker doing a solid job. He's been able to scoot back up a couple of spots and he's now back up to uh, one spot behind his original start position in fifth. 
but it is all Ashton Rinker. He goes down through that hairpin left hand turn. There you see the 94 Awaya. He's got about a 10 boat length lead already over the man from Innisfil, Ontario, Canada, who's in second position and pushing hard. Then it's the 62 of Chris Fairchild. Here comes the 34 of Jeff Reno, the Okeechobee, Florida native, pushing hard. That right hander has gotten real choppy here in the later stages, and it really causes drivers to skip out and end up squeezing one another. You can talk to our. Uh, RJ West and Spencer Love about that. And here comes the 53 of Foster. He finally got that motor fired off the dock. And man, he is a rocket across the water. But when you give up four or 500 yards of distance in Formula One powerboat racing, that is such an insurmountable task to overcome. The 53 of Foster is just going to have to push to try to get himself as high up the finish grid as humanly possible here with just a handful of laps remaining in this main event in Formula One. as the 20 of Rinker continues to push. He's hoping to capture his fourth title and four tries here in 2019 as the 53 of Foster gets a face full of water from the 34 of Jeff Reno. The 20 of Rinker now, that gap starting to shrink as they're starting to get closer to those back markers and that prop wash is becoming more of a problem. The 20 of Ashton Rinker now having to try to get by the Total Energy Services number 70 of Jude Gaspard as he works his way down into the far end of the course, there's the nine of Fleming, the 17 of Dylan Anderson. It looks like the nine of Fleming might have been, yes, the nine of Fleming started 11th and he's already moved up to eighth. 17 of Anderson's dropped back all the way to ninth. He got pinched pretty hard. And that's because the 52 of Rinker has moved himself up into fifth position. So it looks this way in our top five, the 20 of Ashton Rinker, the 94 of Rusty Wyatt, the 62 of Chris Fairchild, the 69 of Jimmy Marilou, and the 52 of Chris Rinker. We got Rinker's bookend of the top five here at round four of the NGK, Formula One Powerboat Championships here on Champions Park Lake. You can see that's about an eight, nine length boat, boat length lead for our leader of the fifth, the 20 of Ashton Rinker, as he goes down into the right-hand chicane along the backside of the race course, pushing hard, and he's really gonna get into a big pile of lap uh, back markers here, and this could be exactly what the doctor ordered for the number 94 of Rusty White. As they go, he, Rinker goes down through the hard 120 degree right-hand turn, turn number five, and then down to the start-finish line, trying to get by the JH performance number 99 of Travis Yates. They are pushing hard, the 94 of Wyatt and the number 20 of Ashton Rinker. These two finished 1-2 in Bay City. Will they finish in the same order 1-2 again, or will they flip-flop? Will the 94 of Wyatt be able to get by the number 20 of Rinker as they come down the front straightaway? They are pushing hard. There's Mayor Lou. There's Rinker. That's fourth and fifth, doing battle. Now 1-2 and two coming out of turn number three through the chicane, right-hand chicane, turn number four. The two Tuttle Enterprises of Tracy Hawkins going wide to the outside as the engine motor problems continue for the Willis, Texas native. So he's allowing these top two boats to get through. Here comes Wyatt, slide it wide to the outside. Now he's gonna contend with the backwash of the 85 of Mike Makis. That's not gonna do anything to help him close that gap on the Rinker Boat World, number 20 of Ashton Rinker. It looks like something might have happened to the 55 of John Eady. He was doing really well up in eighth position, and he's been moved all the way back to 24th. I don't know if he had a motor go south on him there, and he's sitting on, or didn't jump fire off the dock, or if he got a one-lap penalty. Unfortunate for the badass custom truck part sponsored entry as he was running as well as I have ever seen that crazy young man uh, from Seymour, Indiana, run here in the NGK F1 series. But it is all Ashton Rinker. Calm, cool, and collected. He's in control. Nothing bothers him. He gets by the 03 Dust Man of Dustin Terry. As that backup DAC is big and heavy, and it wasn't rigged properly, wasn't set up, and nor did he have any time to set it up. And so he's just out here trying to collect some points after a disastrous round three and round four for the young man out of Thibodeau, Louisiana. But this man has not had a bad weekend all 2019. He won the title in 2018. So he came in as the reigning champion. And now he's looking to win his fourth race in four tries here in 2019. An impressive feat, only done once. If he can win in Col here and win in Colorado, that's only ever been done once before. His name was Terry Rinker. Ashton calls him dad. They're now, team they're now teammates with Ashton in the boat and Terry on the radios 
helping and giving him those decades of experience in Formula One tunnel boat racing. Pushing hard there, the 85 Amakas trying to hold on the lead lap. He's got a ground to make up. And now the 94 of Wyatt's getting into lap traffic. And it's going to be very interesting to see uh, if he's going to find that moment. He's going to need at least one to close this gap. Notice Champions Park Lake starting to rough it up a little bit here in the very late stages of this main event. As Fairchild, Chris Fairchild now hanging back in in third place with the 69 of Mary Lou in fourth. Those two are duking it out. And the 20 of Rinker pushing it hard here on the back straightaway. Slabs down and wait till he sees that white flag go out because that means he's... White flag is out, go fast, turn left. Just five to more times, young man, and you will do what only one other driver has done in the history of Formula One powerboat racing. That is win the first four events of the season. He's gonna go looking to go four for four. He goes through the right-hand turn. Pushing hard, oh, almost gets together with Quindazzi. Comes out of the 120 degree hairpin turn number five. And ladies and gentlemen, for only the second time in North America, a rinker has gone back to back to back to back here in Formula One. He went wire to wire in qualifying. He went wire to wire in the main event here. The winner of Wake the Lake 3, hailing out of Riverview, Florida, running for Rinker Boat World and McLean Trailers, number 20, Ashton Rinker. Confirmation of the result then. Ashton Rinker with another win. Chris Fairchild second. Jimmy Merleau in third place. Chris Rinker, Jeremiah Mayo, Dylan Anderson, Greg Foster, and in eighth place, Johnny Fleming. <laughs>